anticipated. Uh, you saw the was the first game yesterday, right, with the Trovis? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. Um, and I, I think that they usually start off with one of those games. At the same time, I mean, I know that RTC will just ask for one of those heroes every now and then. Like, I, I think for the second game, he was pretty much like, give me Bloodseeker, give me Bloodseeker, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's the reason why their lineups end up like that sometimes. Yeah, we did see that come out. And look at that, Team Secret getting that Tusk through the bands in their first pick as we take a look at the picks and bands. Uh, both bands going down, Pugna being banned out by Secret, and then the Wisp and Caught being banned out by IG. So what do you guys think, Bulldog? I mean, what's IG's plan here? We all we all talked about Secret a lot, but what does IG come in with? Well, I see an Undying ban, Pugna ban, Wisp and Cop ban, but no Prophet ban. So I'm hoping <laughs> that he will see some play finally. Um, yeah, we didn't get to see too much, uh, too much from it yesterday. Uh, SF and Lesh being let through the bands too, because we're, I mean, we've had so many different bands and picks, of course, throughout Dota recently overall. Mm. Uh, SF and Lesh being picked up by IG. Uh, most would argue that two of the really high priority picks in the meta right now. PyCat, do you think that IG is feeling really comfortable right now, no matter what secret picks? I think these are two very standard picks for this patch for sure, and I think they should feel quite comfortable. Uh, picking up both these heroes. I mean, this is also a bit they're stealing some of what Secret could play potentially. So I think this is a very good opening because they can go many ways with this. Slash can be either a support or a core. And the SF mid is, Ferrari is very good with that hero. So also that you can easily, like if the early game goes well for you, you can easily go for Death Ball with this Shadow Fiend mech first. And then you go for the Lesh, which is farming up with the Bloodstone. Or we don't know if it's going to be a support or core. But I think this is the kind of approach IG <coughs> would like to take against Secret where if they have a good laning phase and they're farming well, they're pro obviously going to focus a lot on Ferrari, uh, as they always do. But going for this death ball and, and trying to end the game by going five man, I think that is the right approach because Secret is very, very good at playing around their opponents. And you can just see from the games yesterday, like S4 is always standing on this side lane, baiting someone to go for him. Right. And then as soon as they move for S4, Somebody will run to the other lane and you just keep splitting them apart. So I think that's what they're uh, mostly afra afraid about from IG. Oh, man. All right. I also have to say that this Tusker is very scary, though. <laughs> I, I, I'm always scared when I see Tusk. I yeah. think Sigil is like the scariest spell for any carry. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Tusk has been a bane for a lot of people uh, throughout this tournament and, of course, being picked up whenever it hasn't been banned. We're looking at SD and Razor being banned out. A secret seeming to just get rid of any things that can really throw them off their game within the game. Here in the very first game of semifinal number two, uh, do you think there are any now like super high priority bans left for secret against IG to make things a little bit easier for them? What about you, Bulldog? Well, when you're a team like Secret and you see Left Shark and Shadow Fiend, like that would normally be scary for a lot of teams, but when you're a team like Secret, you don't really care. I mean, you're a confident team. You're going to play your own game, and uh, you don't really care about these high-priority heroes. You're just going to play well. So I don't think they really care about what IG picks. They're just going to focus on what they pick more, more so than anything. All right, their own game. Well, well, we'll see if it's something a little bit more usual or if Secret comes out strong and swinging in game number one. I feel like the Secret bands are a bit like they don't want to lose against something. I wouldn't like to call it cheesy, but, you know, this undying Pagna. Right. Death Ball is incredibly scary, and... If you just make a couple of mistakes, you could actually lose that game no matter how good you are because it's Tombstone and you can... I don't even know if you can decrify the Tombstone anymore, but it's a really, really good synergy. They also removed the SD, that is very good setup for the Lesh, and yesterday you saw that side did die a few times against that SD Lesh uh, setup. And then the last ban is Brood because they don't want to deal with... Right. I mean, yeah, it's Luo just... Brood. It's, <laughs> it is scary in itself, so... Yeah, it's really it's... annoying to deal with. So Secret, like you said, going out with just taking out anything that's annoying. They'd rather do, even if it's strong, less than SF, you at least know what you're up against, yeah. you know what you're going to face here in game number one. Bristol being picked up by IG. So Secret, are we, are we still expecting a little bit more just standard picks here, or do they feel comfortable enough that may, or maybe they specifically came prepared. They're like, here, take the normal high priority picks. We've already come up with a plan. We're just going to ruin the mind games from game number one. What do you think, Mad? Well, right now, IG kind of show their cards like they, they're showing that they're gonna five man you know they're gonna be pushing with those five like at least with those three heroes it doesn't even matter if Slash Rock is a core or not SF Bristol by themselves they want to go with S SF Mech and force fights take fights after your towers so secret they have they kept it open so they can now decide if they're actually gonna fight this or if they're just gonna play around it and to me the color pick is we will play around it 
they won't go like brute for brute force like fights versus them and i think it's also the right approach i don't see why you would force fights which is very very good fighters early on so i think it was very smart for them to keep it open and that's also the, one of the weaknesses with that sf Rage in first pick because you know he will get a good game, he will get mech, so you kind of know the, 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 the game plan already. Well, I would much rather have seen a call ban, last ban from yeah, uh, same. I was actually from, just from IG rather than this Gyro ban. Like, who plays Gyro for Secret? That's Artisi? Yeah. I don't think that's one of his best no, heroes. So if so they would draft Gyro, that's almost a win in a way, not because he's bad, but because <laughs> he's so insane on all the other heroes that are his go to heroes. So, but but also because nice of the, yeah. the puppy coddle is, yeah, it's so so. Scary you saw yesterday, play. like the he's he's setting up kills with blinding lights, like he's ganking with his coddle to speak <laughs> with blinding light. I mean, and you don't see that very often, and they know how to use this coddle very well. Like, they will kite fights, they will they will drag these fights on very long, and while they're doing these fights, they have another player on a different lane, and he's going for these wrecks. So teams get stressed and recall. Yeah, it's very hard to to keep com composure when you're playing against Team Secret and they have this hero. All I right. feel like it's also very nice with both Lash and Bristol because they kind of want to run and deal damage at people. So this uh, this mana leak is actually very annoying to to deal with when you have a Bristol back. Right. Good point. Now the Sven being picked up by IG. What do you think, Loda? I think it's a burning Sven. Um, I've seen him play it before and. I would guess that that's why they drafted the Lesh early. Uh, and I mean, it looked like they drafted all their three cores, but then they threw it around. I'm not really sure if Sven is the best, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I like it. I think they're going to put a lot of pressure on Secret, and maybe they will even consider going aggro try, uh, put Lugo on a solo safe lane, and then throw our mid. Um, okay. All right, we'll see. We'll see how IG adapts. I mean, we, we keep mentioning it. You can't get away from it, even with the other guys here on the panel, that Secret, they will always adapt to your game plan. So you have to come in with something much more prepared as we head into the last phase of picks and bans. Uh, you guys already mentioned that. Uh, Jaron, not, maybe not so much of a high priority ban. What are we looking at here for IG? The, the Viper pick is quite interesting, though, for me, because uh, I, I feel like it's, if you look at the two picks now, Viper and Call, those heroes are very different in how they approach, like if you want, how you want to approach the game with those two heroes. Mm. Viper kind of is kind of very static, you know. It's good that the recall right. is going to help Viper be more mobile on the map, but even though Viper is going to want to stand and be around the fights, you know, whereas Call, he, he, he's more of the... He will just delay pushes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I don't know what they want to do with the Viper pick. Maybe they actually they're actually thinking of not letting them take control and wanna not dodging from the SF Yeah, yeah, maybe or maybe win the mid lane. But it's yeah, it's, but it's so maybe we're gonna see some Tosk roaming very early on and try to pressure that SF. They don't have the best defensive supports. All right. Well, yeah, and so far, uh, as we were watching the tournament, I mean, the theme here when we've been breaking down games has been, I mean, you, you just need to be prepared to face those team fights no matter what kind of draft you have, because that's what everyone eventually culminates into. And the disable is being a really strong part. We saw a lot of harsh uh, team fights yesterday for a lot of teams. What, what do you guys think? I mean, is that, although the meta hasn't really settled, is that always going to be your foundation that you need to be prepared for those five-man team fights, even if that's not your specific strategy? Um, for sure. I think you have to be ready for it, but I think that a hero like Carl could just... is one of those heroes that makes you ready for it. You just delay them. <laughs> so you don't, you don't take that five-man fight. You wait until they get frustrated because someone is split-pushing. There then you go. You TP back, you, then Carl will recall someone and then you take the fight <laughs> five-on-four instead, and then your team fight is a lot stronger, so... Yeah, that's one way to do it. Just don't face it at all. Wait until your terms come into play yeah. in the game. All right, well, last picks for both teams as we look at the last band. PL and Dazzle being banned out by IG and Team Secret, respectively. What what should we expect here? I mean, any anything crazy that can come out from either team that's really going to change how we've been looking at the draft. What do you think, Bulldog? Well, there's one hero left, so if I were IG now, <laughs> I think I would pick Prophet. <laughs> and I could rat this game. Easy. All right. That's what I would do. All right. Well, 50 seconds left for that chance for IG. I mean, IG are definitely looking for a supporter as Secret are most likely looking for an Arteezy hero. And it's going to be a venge. What do you think Secret is going to go for? I don't think they're going to go for the draw, right? Mm, no. It's still here, I also but don't know. Yeah, I don't think sure. it's going to be the Bloodseeker either. I mean, it uh, potentially could be, but I don't think so. I feel like it's going to be some sort of hard carry. All right. Well, I'm actually... 
yeah, I, I actually don't know. Um, <laughs> Drawing a bit of a blank here. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Viper. That's all. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like S4 huge. should be on these yeah. uh, playmakers, and I really, really love to see him with those, on those elusive heroes. Would it be a position one Puck. Viper? I heart. I don't. I don't, I don't think, so. think so either. Not Arteezy. It's not an Arteezy hero. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Viper either. I'm not sure. Yeah, they definitely need a carry right now, but it feels like they lack a lot of. To me, they lack a lot of damage still. They don't have any damage for now. Like the Toss, the Rubik, and the Viper, they don't do so much damage. Right. So they really need the damage healer. Last pick. Yeah. No, well, there you go, Tommy. <laughs> Partners anti mage coming in. And that's going to round out the lineup for Team Secret. Well, that's it for the picks and bans. Thank you so much for your insight, gentlemen, from Team Alliance. Of course, it was a pleasure to speak with you, Loda, Bulldog, Matt, and Piecat. But for now, we are ready for semifinal number two. Who's going to take it? Who's going to face EG in the grand finals? Let's find out as we jump over to the casters on the stage. Kappa. Thank you very much. Yes, let's get underway for Secret versus Invictus Gaming, game number one. Uh, the Dank has gone from the panel to this Tesk by the looks of it. You didn't need to say it. It wasn't played. It was, oh, really? it was doing its own... Really? It was carrying its own weight. That's yeah. all right, though. I can't get enough of that. Yeah, this is going to be a great game. Uh, uh, I think it's a very unpredictable one as far as drafts go. In my my opinion, maybe relative to the opponent draft, perhaps Secret's weakest draft of the tournament, I dare say. Uh, but that doesn't mean they have a weak draft. It's just... Yeah. Uh, I think it's actually I think an average actually, draft as opposed to an extraordinary draft, which yes, they normally ex seem to have. Exactly, because generally Secret have a really, really smart approach to things, and I know they're going to put some great lanes here, but I, when I look at over at IG's draft, I just see a very well-rounded draft that really has the tools for, for example, dealing with an anti-mage. I think if Arteza does not have a really explosive early game, mm -hmm. he can have a mid-game where even if he has great farm, you're playing anti-mage into Shadow Fiend, Bristleback, Venge minus armor, uh, even a Sven with bonus armor for the team. There's just a lot of things to play around with, and I think the only reason they really wanted it was for the Mana Void for Lesh, else I think they go another route in this game with Arteezy's hero. So, should yeah. be interesting to see. I, I really, I actually favor IG's draft this game, though. Yeah, it, it looks really strong, and they've got great control abilities. We've actually got a draft with stuns, which we can be happy about, as opposed to our previous game yesterday. But the, the draft is, is strong for IG, but secret. If they can hit their timing, if they can get their space, they can do so. And Papillon, Keeper of the Light, and Kuro and Rubik, these two support heroes a secret, can easily do it. Especially when you know who's playing what. Kuro's Rubik is legendary. It's probably the greatest Rubik in the world next to a couple of the Chinese players. And Puppy's Keeper of the Light goes back ages. Kuro, though, well, his Rubik is fantastic, but he can't survive this. First stun, second stun, Invictus Gaming, even with a Storm Bomb. They commit all three control abilities to claim the first blood inside the dark jungle. You need to be a really good Rubik to survive that. <laughs> he might be the best Rubik, but that is. That's a little bit too much to handle. Uh, speaking of great Rubik's, just want to mention, by the way, how impressive that hero has been in, in general over the last few weeks. I thought a lot of teams overrated it, especially we, I believe we cast some games together in the Chinese qualifiers. Or yep. like, It's obviously not the same caliber of teams in that qualifier, but it was rated really high, and I felt like it didn't have that high of an impact. But these days, the teams we've seen in recent tournaments really, really do it well. Standout player for me on Venge to keep, or sorry, on Rubik to keep in mind has been Lil, who unfortunately for Virtus Pro, they did get knocked out earlier today. Uh, but like you said, Kuroki, also a great Rubik player, and there's more where they came from so oh yeah well let's get into our lane so ig it will be aggro trial lane versus defensive trial lane and unfortunately for secret their ward their sentry ward is only millimeters away oh, from wow. seeing the sentry ward of invictus gaming which is this guy right here uh right on top of the camp uh but while they're hunting for this kuro actually has to come back over artis he's trying to stay in the lane as his anti-mage and find farm up against the <laughs> triple stun lineup you get caught by one of these stuns and you're practically dead um, but Arteezy does have that blink so he could evade at least the magic missile part of the attack um, as well as the storm bolt but he won't be able to disjoint that split earth that's all about positioning and the problem for Secret in this lane is that if they can't pull, I'm actually very surprised they're not trying to drop the second sentry for this, because they should have a feeling that this could be, like, th this is where this has got to be, right? Now Kuro has even checked this this corner where, can you even put a ward in there? I don't, I... Even, I don't think you can. They're they're a bit confused, because I guess they're just used to this ward covering Yeah, the they're, they're peeking at the other side, yeah. and Puppy's going to drop the sentry ward now. down, go. and now they it. realize it's like, oh, okay, that's exactly where it was. Meanwhile, Viper, actually wow. in the okay. middle lane, 
S4 has somehow managed to get a solo kill underneath the tier 1 tower on the Shadow Fiend, while on bottom lane, Luo is in real trouble here, as Zai's going to find himself a solo kill. Snowball into the shards, and with an orb of venom, it was impossible for the Brusselback to run away. Only one point up in that Brusselback, that's when it's still possible for a Tusk to get on top. This is so huge for Secret, because that top tri lane, even though they can start pulling soon, or actually now, they lose a lot of momentum in the lane just by, by losing these first two minutes. And now the thing that happens uh, is their, their solos can just carry Luar, the weight now. You don't want to be doing this again, man. He's up against Zai in the bottom lane. The snowball comes in. He took so much damage from the creep wave and Zai. He's got five cool stacks on top of him. The salve cancelled by that one little range creep. But Zai wants to keep chasing it in. He doesn't have snowball mana. In fact, he's got ice shards off cooldown in one second time and the mana available. He can keep Luo away from the haste stream but realizes it's not worth the mana investment. So they just let it go. Oh, Ferrari mid again is in trouble against S4. He's diving really deep, but... A little bit of fogging there around the trees will keep him safe, but yeah, these two solo lanes for IG have been a disaster so far. In so it can definitely happen you get run over as Shadow Fiend uh, against Viper. If if Viper gets a head start, he is very, very strong for this particular lane. But just on paper, I'm very surprised that Zai is winning this Tusk versus Bristleback matchup. I would have favored Bristle for this just... Uh, yeah, I know we were talking about it before we even one. started. We're looking at the draft, thinking, can you actually just leave him to go? Puppy trouble on top lane. They've gone for the first stun. Double stun in a Puppy as well as Kuro. And now RT can come to join the fight for Chuan. Maybe there's enough life. Kuro's on the chase. Oh, he's out on the run, sorry. And RT no blink dagger available. The poor man's shield. At least the PMS can block a little bit of the damage. Blink in one second time. He can't do it. The track lightning will connect. And IG will find themselves more kills on this top lane. Puppy won't throw out the Illum to give the harassment damage on the way out. And IG have also got unwanted aggro. They've dragged that creep wave down, which means now the full creep wave comes onto the tower, and that's easy experience, which Puppy desperately needs. They need to have Chakra. They need to find levels and the ability to spam out this Illumina on top lane. So if IG do dive, they're at least a little bit low on life when they come onto the tower. And that was indeed a very deep dive, where I think if you have a TP on Zai's Tusk in this situation, you... Just flat out mm, counterplay that very He's really easily. Yeah, one more attack from dead. S4. He hits him too. And now battle for the rune. It's a regeneration. He just lets the Viper Strike go. S4 going for the double solo. And he's got it. Double kill for S4. After already claiming the SF's live solo in the mid, this Viper is a beast at level six and a half. Three zero four minutes in. Yeah, this this mid lane is <laughs> is over. Uh, Shadow Fiend does not stand a chance anymore. So they have to either rotate and gank the mid lane once, or they have to start playing defensively around him, which they definitely don't want to do because that would open up Arteezy's top lane. And I can't stress enough how important it is that secret solos are outplaying their lanes because if they weren't, I think IG would have a pretty good grip on the early game just with how much they're getting out of the top lane. Sure, Lesh doesn't have that great of a lead on the AM. But the fact that he doesn't have free farm, yeah, he's in trouble. Second stun, third stun's gonna be a bubble. Animation needs a blink, and he's away. Oh. Off to the side, Salve as well as one charge will keep Arteezy alive. Burning was actually allowing Chuan to farm up the lane so he could try and get the Split Earth from inside the Fog of War and catch the enemy out of position. But because he got so close, Arteezy, Chuan just went directly for the Storm Bolt instead. I... I'm not sure if, uh, if Ferrari can manage this one on his own. I, he had a game yesterday where he went 0-3 in lane. Actually, bottom lane. Luo should be fine, though. Yeah, just just missing on the shards. At the same time, Lestrax killed off Coddle on this top, back behind the Tier 1 tower. But if those shards were able to connect and having now the Polar Punch available for the Tusker, there's a lot more kill potential in this bottom, especially when Kuro just wanders himself in with boots, even if he's only level 2. Having that control factor with telekinesis and a little bit of a Fade Bolt damage is enough to help get the kill. Ferrari is playing this the way he needs to, though. Um, he got destroyed in lane by S4, and the moment you die once to a Viper as a hero like Shadow Fiend, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. But he went into the jungle and got some Here stacks, and this is the really big play that they absolutely Bolt need coming. to succeed. Can they actually and get it? it? Will. S4 is going to go down. Puppy will at least get a little bit of Luma spam and die. In for actually the shards, getting burning, twisting him up in the air as he tosses him like an egg. But as a one-for-one -one trade off that Viper was still, as you said, the biggest thing they could get. Even if you commit a three-man smoke and four, man, four men to kill him off, they got a reaction from Secret as well. And they lost their Lesh, though, which is, of course, being played in a core position this game from burning. So in that sense, it's a one-for-one -one core trade, but I, I still think it's worth it for IG. They simply needed to get Ferrari a little bit more of a grip in the lane. And even though they trade Secret, do port in Tusk, I believe Puppy also ported to that mid lane. Yes, so he did. double TPs. 
It does, however, come at the cost of our TZ getting a little bit of farm in the top lane, so... Yeah, Secret do get something out of it, and they are still ahead in this laning stage overall. It's even better for Zai, because he was the man that got that kill onto the track. So he affords arcane boots with this. So you've practically got a Tuscar that never really wants to go back to base anymore. Control the bottom rune, and he'll always have the life. Kuro's also trying to contest Ferrari, who's at this point just farming up. He'll need his level 7. But Viper only has to be a little, just a little bit closer for this. They get a Telekis pick up and then into a Viper Strike, and they practically got it. And that's why Kuro is hovering around here. Level three, there's your pickup, which means there it is. Pull back, Viper Strike, Ferrari TP out. Bayball damage, that's not going to be enough. He's ticking low, where I can base, but he'll survive long enough while on bottom lane. It was actually a kill coming in for Invictus Gaming. As they get the sun on the Tuscar, and he'll end up dropping. And secret with that rotation mid. Kuroki, level three minutes, seven and a half on his Rubik. It's of course, it's not that bad, but generally we see him have a really good early game where he sets up a couple of successful kills. And falling behind on Rubik against this kind of, I want to say face rush lineup, where you're just like, you run in Lesh, you run in Sven, you run in your Bristle. That's the kind of lineup that Rubik really struggles to deal with. He has very weak mobility. You've got the Telekinesis level one as your only defensive mechanism. And if you get caught by a single stun, you're just dead. So. He's going to have a pretty difficult game, I think, and, I mean, we're saying it for Rubik. Coddle is kind of the same story, so they need to be very, very cautious in the next next few minutes that yeah. they don't let IG get the ball rolling too much. Just keep your distance, farm up like what Puppy's doing at the moment. He just found himself a double stack. Um, so he found, prepared himself for double stack. So he's just going to find a couple of levels here, pick up your tranquils, maybe potentially get to a four stack, get some distance on, on IG when the fights do begin. And Kuro's just going to find some levels through pulling as well. He needs to have his level 6. So, we talk about all the stuns which IG have. Imagine what this can be done, like what can be done in the hands of Kuro if he can get both Arcanes as well as Blink Dagger on this Rubik. And there are, there are a lot of good spell steals. Uh, of course, I want to say maybe the absolute best he can get, at least for many situations, will be the Lightning Storm. Just because IG will, as mentioned, want to really run in and catch you off. And at four second, that four second jumping slow on all of their heroes is really going to cause them a lot of issues in the fights they will be looking for. Um, in addition to that, I want to mention how valuable Warcry can actually be. And it's a lot of, in a lot of games, you're like, oh, I got Warcry, I didn't get Stormhammer, but this is the kind of game where you look over at IG's draft once again, so much physical damage coming out from their side that should he be able to steal Warcry mid-game, that could be a valuable spell, here, spell steal here. 20 armor for 8 seconds for the entire team is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, especially when you have heroes like Keeper of the Light walking around with um, one armor, and same with Guru. <laughs> like, there's not much to speak of. There is, however, one big armor item which is being picked up. Up. I say big, it's not just only for his armor, it's also for the heal. The mech is coming up rapidly for S4. He's only 120 gold away from completing the entire thing for now. They want to try to crack it mid. There is the tough guy behind him. The shots come out, but the S4 stun, that's a problem. Snowball in, he's on four heroes. I need to make more space, and he's able to do so. Keeping burning back, even if the stun is hit in S4. Kuro will now make his way in the lane, slowing him down. Not to mention the Sigil you're making impossible for IG to chase into the river. That was four heroes trying to kill one and a very nuisance snowball. Tusker coming in from the side. I think Venge and Sven layered their stuns. I'm pretty sure they cast them at the same time. They weren't sure they were both going to get in range. And it almost felt like they were just trying to do the nuke out. instead. Like, instead of the control time, it was just get the damage out. Yeah, but the Tusk snowball really ruined it for them there. That was a perfect rotation from Zai. Right place, right time. And definitely worth it for them. Like, S4 was trying to force a rotation, and he maybe got a bigger rotation than he, than he wanted. But with no deaths on their side, they're going to be happy with that. Yeah. Waste of time for IG, more time for Arteezy, who isn't going for the direct battle fury, but he still managed to find treads, the PMS, which he had from the start, as well as a ring of health. Not a lot of money on top of that, but it still allows him to keep the farm going. And while Secret are continuously attacking into the mid or being aggressive onto the bottom, you've got more to play with because you've got space. And that's probably even the bigger thing. Kuro again is just watching Ferrari and just leeching the experience as he farms up the camps. And S4, as you mentioned, has the mech, so he's still that key item up on Ferrari in the middle lane, who will of course want to look for a mech of his own, unless uh, it doesn't look like Lua will be getting it on the Bristol, so I think that is the plan. And that is an item they definitely do want. As Ferrari again going to be aggressed by S4. Faith is level 6 on the Venge. He's 3-1-3. Three, 
And I talked about this yesterday. I feel like it's been a tendency for IG that Faith has just, first of all, he's stepped up his game, and secondly, he's been giving more, he's been given more experience and farm priority by the team than we've seen in the past. I'm saying that as he's six and four on CS, but <laughs> it's a 12-minute game, and still, he's been having a really high impact no matter what. Well, let's see if they can have an impact with this next move. So. Rotation time for IG, and again, they'll head themselves up towards the top. They want to find the Anti-Mage. They want to ensure that he gets absolutely nothing. If they can't find him, take the Consolation Prize. Oh, Courier would be a decent prize. Yeah, it would be, but it's a little bit too far away for them, and they don't know if they've still got the speed boost available. If they get a wave of terror on Puppy, he is super dead. He's going to give away his position here, actually. So they have to come underneath the tower. Here goes your wave of terror. They do see him. Faith in range for the swap in time. Oh, and no! Not. Wow. The Stormbolt will fly globally. Oh, all the way sure back. they were going to be able to make it in there, but Faith cast it as far away as possible, where it still gave vision of Puppy. And even with Warcry, they couldn't catch up in time with the instant TP out. So Yeah. In fact, I think the TP happened at the exact same time as the wave of terror was thrown out. Luon, bottom lane. Zai battling with him. He's got Snowball up and running. Shards in two seconds to try and hold Luo in position, allowing and Kuro to arrive. There's those shards, but Kuro, not really in range, not really a... Well, he's got three points Fade Bolt, but needed S4 as well right behind him to do anything with it. And was that a two-hero teleport to bottom by Secret? I think... No, never mind. Puppy couldn't have ported because he ported back to base. So S4 TP down, trying to run for that kill, and Kuroki has TP available, so... They did force a rotation here. IG still they brought their players started, as well. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is a key moment. I think Secret might be making a pretty big mistake if they engage on the bristle. Uh, we'll see if they're going to do it. It's the same they feel thing. Feel like this is fishy right now. Like, it was the same thing that happened in the mid, though. Like, and that was with two players that were able to keep them at bay. Now the movement down. Luo is a fair way up, but they said fight face down with the shards bringing Tron towards the front lines. The Warcry has gone off, and Kuro, the sick charge is still away and available for him. Can he survive through it? Well, at this point, it's only the Vengeful Spirit down. Tron's going to join him, and the raid's not enough. Iron Mage comes in. Ferrari with the wreck move. This minimal damage, it might be enough to kill off S4, but Kuro, stealing raid, returning it in, and S4 picks up a double kill. They lose only Puppy, and Luo is the sole survivor defending that T1 tower. But Secret is pretty low, they might just back it up. It's so important for Secret that they get the opening like that, that they find Faith out there and burst him down quickly. If they, as I mentioned, if they would have gone on the Bristle, if he would have been the hero they found out, they might not have been able to initiate at all, and had they done it, it could have been a disaster. But instead, they find the right targets, they uh, chase down very nicely onto the key heroes, and the surprise factor there, Zai with the early Glimmer Cape, really made a big difference. Because that's what ended up saving Kuro's life. Luo are going to be careful being this far up. Puppy starting to find levels, and soon you're going to actually start to encounter Mana Leak from the Keeper of the Light onto Luo. And his mana pool is already quite poor. 572. Well, she looks like our kill is going to be on top lane instead as in comes Zai. Glimmer Cape in, so then he can just punch burning out. And there he goes. Arteezy is the man to get the kill, enjoying the money. And also enjoying being 800 gold away from having that Battle Fury, the critical item for an anti-mage. Yeah, it's going to be a good timing, considering he was against an aggressive tri in the start. But this is what I was talking about earlier in the game, where, well, if, if Secret hadn't won those solo lanes so convincingly, Arteezy wouldn't have this amount of farm right now, because they wouldn't have had to rotate into the mid lane to help Ferrari. They wouldn't have had to gank Lugo's lane as well. And all of that just really snowballed Secret into a very good position. Speaking of Luo, he comes in close up against Zai, gets punched up, and that's a double damage rune over on Zai. But Luo kept his back turned, so he was going to be fine there. But on the top lane, T1 Tower is forced to be fortified. A secret is bearing down on it. And they're actually full. Like, there's support coming up from IG. Chuan's the first man to the front line. He's got Faith and Burning right behind him. So what is the aggro tri lane of IG returns to the top lane? Can they? Oh. I'm just going to hold this top tower with Burning for now. His farm, considering that he was against the Antimage in lane and was doing better than him, he has fallen behind big time. And it's, of course, been the rotations that he had to go into to help out his team. I'm not saying they made the wrong play by doing that, but they needed a little bit more crisp execution in the fights they found, especially around that mid lane area against S4 earlier, who, speaking of which, is looking to maybe open up on Burning. They're waiting for Kuro to be able to join. Now he's going to have to go, and Burning's dead. Yep. Even if he just sticks out from the Viper Strike, Kuro helps him out with a Fade Bolt, but he came in with a Shadow Fiend Raze. And they're being pulled back out. Kuro can't take damage. Well, the Wave of Terror actually cancels the Storm Bolt. 
also unable to get the sun in time. Kuro has to walk himself out this one until Kolo can recall him again in three seconds time. He has the same movement speed as the Venge, so there's no way... They found Luo, snowball in behind the tower of the T1, just send him up into his the air, and in comes S4, there's damage, stun, something, nothing. Kuro couldn't get there to get off the telekinesis grab. And that would have been it. Puppy was trying for a Mana Leak into Blinding Light, but Mana Leak only being level 1, the cast range is what disallowed him from getting that kill there. Were the level... I think he needed level 3. He could have actually stopped the Bristol port there, and that is an admirable attempt, but not enough. They still get the tower, though. They're going to easily be happy with this. Secret are taking very good control of the map. 7,500 golden experience lead and a farming anti-mage with Battle Fury. And to think that this is exactly what IG tried to prevent with their laning, this is not good. <laughs> this is what the panel was also saying previously, like Secret. They just feel comfortable. They play their own game. They play it their way, their style. And don't bother about anything else because you know if you execute your strategy correctly and you feel like you can now play the enemy, you just go for it. And that's exactly what's ended up happening here as Arteezy now. And because everything else works in the other lanes, he's up at 1,300 gold after having the Battle Fury already up and running, and he's taking away IG's camp. So now they can't even play around there. You get us 18 or 17 minute hand of Midas out from Tuscar after he finished the Glimmer Cape. So you get a couple more levels. Maybe Ferrari can do something on this top lane. As he comes to Puppy, starts the Requiem, and oh. releases the Requiem. Okay. A little bit of revenge on the Captain of Secret, and then a straight TP out by 4-3-0. He's out to safety. Cora may not be as safe, though. Faith right behind him. Now he's going to reach the swap, I think. Oh, maybe not. Lost the vision. And uh, if he needed to cast out the Wave of Terror first, he won't be able to get him. A little bit of movement he loses from that would have been enough for Kuro. So. <laughs> That's he's actually Barely. creep skipping now up against Luo. It's almost though he, like, he wants Luo to spend more time chasing him than being in a lane or coming anywhere near neutral camps. This is the way Arteezy can put the absolute most pressure on the map. If he cuts the wave, he forces a reaction, whether it be supports rotating or, of course, like in this situation, Luo running over and fighting him. So they're taking a very aggressive stance and trying to minimize any impact IG can have right now. And well, IG themselves are looking for something. Uh, maybe they can kill off S4 and here and uh, yep, there's a uh, make charge available, but I think the stuns should be chained well enough that he uh, not able to get it off. Yep, there's your stuns. Well, okay, he did get the mech off at least, but it takes so long to kill off that Viper that he was still able to purchase these two 1k items. So you're only 800-ish gold away from having your Aghanim Scepter. The kill was successful, but in the meantime, you're losing your camps. Now Luo, that man of void, able to stop the TP out, and Kuro gonna pick him up, throw him back. What do we got, stolen Quill Spray? Maybe Kuro can start stacking it up. It's Arteezy taking all the mana out of Luo, so no wall pass stacks, and with a triple TP response, only two of them will end up completing. And that's, uh, that's Faith as well as Chuan. It was Ferrari who didn't come back. This is such a classic secret play that I feel like a lot of other teams don't do enough, which is just putting pressure. I don't think they expected to be able to kill the Bristle. Like, the goal of that entire skirmish was not to kill him off. It was just to force a rotation. And every time IG are playing on the defensive, it opens up the map for Antimage. It gives them possibilities elsewhere on the map. And, you know, it's not all about the kills. It's a lot more about the map, and I feel like Secret understand that like no other team. They can still have the kills. Ferrari, blinding lighted up, pulled up, thrown around, and where's your walrus punch? Well, Zai standing in close. Now he finally tosses Ferrari up, but the sigil making it impossible for Ferrari to fight, not to mention he can't see Zai. The shines will stop him from running straight back down the mid. Well, the lightning and burning is deterring Secret from going any further. Meanwhile, down south, Arteezy is taking out this tier 2 tower all by himself, and IG almost feel pressure to try and counter push the mid but with the illuminate the creepway is practically gone and Zai is coming back in again maybe looking for shards if Lua is stuck around too long underneath the tower but Viper will end up taking one tower as well on the top lane and Arteezy hasn't finished on the bottom. So even if they do take the tier one, which they might, there's your snowball. Faith started off with a swap, but he gets war punched up. The suns are there, but then Kuro stealing swap, pulling it back under the tower. Not enough to save him. The Faith completely out of mana, hence getting a little bit stunned up by that mana leak. There's no other follow-up. It's just the Tuscar to die. <laughs> Arteezy is just creep skipping mid again now. This has got to be very frustrating. They need to be careful with the courier. Actually, almost flying that into him. And even though IG do get that mid-tower, they traded one for two towers. They get a kill on Tusk, but it comes at the cost of Arteezy just free-farming at the same time. And 
I was talking about how in this game, I think IG has a really good draft at fighting Antimage, and I still think they do. What they needed to do was make sure he didn't snowball and get a very good early game, and they only managed to accomplish that for the first four minutes. Now the real challenge begins. They will find a pick on Puppy at least, so that's something for them. Yeah, the lowest cryo kill they could get them. Or maybe oh, they could find that's easy. He's gonna blink down and then TP out using, in fact, the fog of war behind the tree. Bernie didn't see him go, and it was the right decision. Understanding the puppy died back over in the Radiant Jungle meant that those stunning supports were gonna come back over to him. So no point just trying to run it away. At least that's a nice item now up for Ferrari. A full BKB done 22 minutes in. It's not looking too shabby for IG. They are managed. They managed to find a couple of kills that keep them at this 7k deficit, which is still manageable, right? You're looking at the uh, sorry at the anti mage, and his net worth right now is obviously ahead of theirs. But when it comes to team fight impact, he is still massively reliant on Leshrac getting low on mana in the first place, and he can't just fight into their faces when he's running into so much physical damage that IG might still be able to take the team fights they're looking for in secret. They, it feels like the game they had against Fnatic yesterday, game one, where they just spread the map, they buy time, they play around the Coddle split push uh, together with the carry. In that case, it was both Queen of Pain and Drow. This time, it's the Anti-Mage, and they just build up an advantage. IG will be the ones trying to pressure, looking for this bottom tier one. This is a very difficult fight, though. That it is, but the enemy doesn't have mana style up just yet, so he's not perfect about burning off the instant mana of the Bristleback, but at the same time, he got Coddle, so you, you're still pretty fine with it. And Koro, he's still got that Nether Swap. It's going to last for a couple more seconds, but this means that Koro, if he wants to, can be your initiator or a direct save if IG initiate in. I don't think I've... I can't remember seeing an aggressive swapping Rubik. Yeah, <laughs> like, I can't think of it either. asking to get killed. <laughs> it's like At least when you do it with Venge, you have the negative Vengeance aura when you die, and you're pretty tanky with your armor and health. Rubik's just... <laughs> please target me. I suppose the other me. way is if, if VS swaps somebody out, at least you can swap him deeper into your lineup and that instantly kill him. So it's a guaranteed kill. Well, either way. Gonna... Yep. Pop in for, right, for the big boy, they did force a rotation top from burning, so... Well, IG's ready, time, though. But, yeah, that looks like they have a really good idea this is happening. Anti-Mage is being pulled back in, and he's going to bring the Vladimir's offering with him. Wave of Terror, Luo just walks straight in, but he cannot see into the pit anymore. There's your Malik, and the Blinding Light puts him up on top of the cliffside. They'll hold him in with the shards, and Roshan, Arteezy, is still going to work on him. Decides to back it up, just blinks himself away as Luo is having the easiest time walking out past the Ogres. To just go back to the lanes. You chip Roshan down, you force IG to come back, and you just go back to your farming game. They're under the, no pressure to take Roshan. That was still a play IG needed to make. Even though they don't get a fight, at least they stopped the Rosh. So I want to say mission accomplished for them. Just but for how long is that mission long accomplished? That is a very good question. But it was a smoke used by Secret. They did not get Roshan. They did not get a kill. And IG are able to regroup and go again. And Antimage still without Manta. This, considering how much net worth is on him, I think he has less of a team fight impact than a Shadow Fiend with 3k less. Uh, he's right. got Manta now. Yeah, if that, when that flies out, things are going to change. There we go. So. It's actually coming on the courier at the moment to him while he's taking the Radiant Ancients and now going to take out the top lane as well. How does IG even deal with this? Like you say it was a fight that IG had to take to try and stop Roshan. But now Animage returns to the top lane. He's instantly getting recalled. And now IG think they're actually going for Roshan, which hilariously enough they're not, but IGE, they have an Observed Ward in the mid and Secret just smoked right on top of it. That so IG should be 100% aware of what they are doing. The only irony would be if IG smoked on top of the Dire Observed Ward, which is in their jungle. All right, this play is so sick, actually. So it was going to be... IG thought that uh, Secret wanted them to think they were rushing with AM, or that they pulled him in for that, but then they see the smoke mid, so they think it's a smoke gank. And then instead they send Arteezy into the pit in turn to try to solo it, and they still figure it out. So another smoke from, uh, from Secret, not successful. Arteezy's coming in behind really them. He's actually up on the high ground, right behind Burning as well as Chuan. But the funny thing is, Puppy isn't there. He's he going can, to cut the weight in it. He can actually TP in. 
they, they just can't keep momentum. And even S4 is moving down the bottom and to keep it in. And IG have had enough of this. They're not playing Ring of Ring of Rosie. They're coming in to take out Roshan. The Sigil's down. In come the Shards with the Fade Bomb. Roshan will be caught up by the Radiant. Lashrak will take the Aegis Immortal. But they're all trapped in here. Copping Illuminus to the face. Fade is around the back end. There's no vision. The Snowball in. It's dying close. Glimmer came trying to escape. He doesn't need the Sentry Ward just on the edge. Ferrari fires up the old. He's going to be in range of Puppy, who's now also dead. The number four, but you have Faith thrown up on top of the cliffside, but he's got swap available. Kuro doesn't want to come back into this. Maybe if he can still swap and get back down again. He's got one race, but he's stranded on the high ground. IG take three, as well as Roshan, and a horrendous fight for Secret. They just found that five second window where Secret, Secret were not ready. That was absolutely perfect from them going for the play. They see Arteezy trying to cut the wave in mid. They see Puppy top, so they know that until Puppy is ported bottom, AM doesn't join either. And just that little bit of time is enough as Arteezy looking for Faith. Does he have enough with the mana point? Okay. Gonna... He actually stopped walking and accepted his fate. Um, he dies like a soldier. What? That was really weird. I think it could have actually... He could have at least made it to his tier 3, and then maybe Arteezy just gives up, but instead he's just like, all right, you can have one back. Thanks for the Roche. Except <laughs> <laughs> my fate, you're the consolation prize. That's 14 to 12, and this advantage was Secret Howard, about 7,500 gold. Starts coming back, Dak, back to 5,000 gold, and the experience is hovering around 3,000 too. So Secret's big, big lead. Not as big as it used to be, but... The leading net worth is still Arteezy. 16,000 is his net worth, and the nearest to him is 12,000 on the SF. Well, the thing to keep in mind with Antimage in this version where creep kills have been nerfed as well as in, in terms of gold gain, both in, both in the jungle and in the lanes, Arteezy will not be getting as far ahead as usual. Puppy being hunted by Ferrari. Sees it and gets away. It was the Shadow Blade which was trying to get Ferrari to the front lines. This is an interesting build up. I think Ferrari will want to go for the Silver Edge this time. We've seen him just get the Shadow Blade casually on Shadow Fiends in order to set him up for ults. Mm -hmm. But being able to remove that spell shield from AM should be very, very useful in allowing Lash to blow him up. You have a lot of spell damage between the Razors and Requiem as well, of course. And could be a, a nice addition to their repertoire. Another smart TP out from Arteezy, blinking to the tree line just below the tier 3 tower of the Radiant on bot lane. Understanding again that the players are behind him. Great just map awareness from Arteezy, but he's still going to be aware that Ferrari is on the hunt. Shadow Blade charge being used again, but Arteezy just moving from camp to camp, and in this case, Ancient. And they can't do anything to really stop him. After 3.6k gold, probably Eagle Song to be picked up now as he walks to the shop. Uh, he'll Think continue. He wants he'll continue walking. And yep, maybe you're right. Mana starts going to go. Luo very quickly down on his mana. And the illusions will just chase all the way in. So you actually still want, you want to see him go for a straight BKB. I suppose with the amount of stuns, it makes sense. I think it's a good choice. I'm not sure if it's what he's considering. He could have bought it just then, but he bought a TP. So maybe he's, uh, he's looking at his options before he makes the decision. Give him time. Like the, again, like it's also secrets under pressure. As long as AM keeps moving between his camps, it gives time for secret to just discuss what they really want to be doing here. You get a blink dagger on Rubik, so he's in his timing. That's just a standard item for Koro. But like, what do you want out of this Tusker? He's already providing so much with both Solar Crest as well as Glimmer Cape. What more do you even want from him? What does the Viper go next? Agadim Scepter as well as the Mech. Another 2.7k gold. Do you try and get something like the Assault Cuirass? Do you go for something more tankier for the Viper? Mm, I think getting Kyrus on S4 would be a pretty good pick. Alternatively, another BKB. I, when you look at the Radiant lineup, it just seems to be a really big value item. There's so much damage you can block, and there's a lot of key stuns that you would be able to, uh, to avoid as well. So, I think for Secret, it's either they all get BKBs or none of them get it. And then, if, if that's the case, I actually think a pipe on Zai would be pretty good in this game where he has a Midas, he can farm it up, he needs some tank ability himself. I mean, sure, he's got a lot of armor, but his health pool is really, really weak against all these spells, so he either needs the pipe for the team or some sort of health for himself. Okay, I want to ask you a question about Ferrari. Um, you're running a Shadow Blade. Now, this isn't the cheapest item to use. It's 75 mana to actually use it. You then go 225 mana, you're burning from the mech. An illusion just hit him five times and took his mana down to one third. 
how is Ferrari meant to keep Nan to continue to fight? There's no one charges available for him, so he can't just go to that. And you're popping a lot of Nan to get off both three Razors and your Requiem of Souls. He's fully dependent on a perfect BKB timing. I mean, if he doesn't do that, he is in a lot of trouble. And if, I think if he tries to itemize to have more mana, you know, not something like a Shiva, right? But it, let's say you get a Scotty, for example, an item that both gives you damage, tank ability, and mana. Yeah. They might not have enough hard hitting for RTZ come the next, let's say, minute 40. They need some sort of single target damage that really hurts. And you, you probably need him need with Monkey King Bar because RTZ could just finish up a full butterfly, but he's actually going to go for control go factor. For VF swapping inside the perfect sun on burning. That is just beautiful synergy coming out from IG to kill off the Zai. How much gold is that kill? That is a thousand gold swing? Yep, 444, the, the bulk of them the going XP. into the SF. Just these single pickoffs are really, really valuable. I'm surprised they get so, more, so much for it, considering they're not further behind than 7,500. I guess Zai's net worth in this game is pretty high. Sitting on 10k before that death. Luo just lost every bit of mana he had. Uh, the full Abyssal Blade is now done for Arteezy. Like, he's got those golden rapiers as, <laughs> as blades. I think he's actually got more money than that. He could have an extra spare set, set at home. This enemy mage is getting completely farmed out, and there's nothing that Lua can really do about it. Because he can't keep mana up during fights. It's impossible. Is he going to try for Lua? Yes, he is. Yeah, why not? you got your Abyssal Blade control with the mana void. The BKB also gets triggered, and he still finds the kill. That was the 10-second BKB burn. And 60 seconds on the sideline, not to mention a solo kill, rewarding him with 633 gold. Perfect timing on the old uses as well from Arteezy. He needs to time it so that he gets it off right before the BKB with maximum mana burn. And just jumping in with Abyssal for the two seconds done is enough to They're get coming to kill him. completely out of mana. They're coming to kill him. Chuan oh, blinks yeah. in, finds a stun, burning follow-up stun. Oh, he actually dodges it out. The two illusions stayed in the range for the split earth. But he just went the other direction. Now waits in the trees and blinks up to the rest of his teammates. Then the burning. Oh, he came in to try and do the T-Ward. Shows himself in the tree line. And he'll go down or at least Faith has to sacrifice himself for the greater good. But gives Kuro a level two swap. He blinks down, brings Ferrari back. A bit of play still on cooldown for now. And Arteezy can't find the RNG to get the bash. But he'll move straight back into farming and taking the tier two tower in the mid. This is why you have to watch Kuro's Rubik. He's so quick with these things. Now <laughs> the enemy mage has another 2300 gold. He's getting mixed out very quickly. Controlling the map very nicely. The fact that IG lose this little bit of a skirmish here in the bottom lane just opens up way more, gives them more time. There is indeed going to be the Silver Edge for Ferrari this game. I, as I mentioned, I do agree with this pickup, but it might just be coming out too late. 34 minutes is not the best timing in the world. Of course, Arteezy is scaling so fast that even if they can remove his spell shield, there's no guarantee they can even burst him down, especially not while Rubik has the swap available. It's just not going to happen. He can swap, then blink instantly. Life is just beyond hard. It's about to get harder. The Aghanims is done for Puppy. So this global control that we saw Secret manipulate perfectly yesterday, it can happen again. Wherever you want to go, you're always going to have that recall to pull you back in again. Just keep your distance. And in fact, that, sh that Silver Edge, which Ferrari's got, he can't use to initiate. Kuro just buys a gem. He says, enough with this. We'll just get the vision up and running. Oh, I'm hearing me, Kibi. Yep, it's up on top lane. Luo is the man to trigger it as Arteezy was the one to jump in with that Abyssal Blade. And now he's just playing the mind game because he just killed... He just killed Luo in the bot lane with this kind of engage, so now Luo is going to be scared of a, the same type of engage, which I think this time wouldn't actually have worked for Arteezy since Luo had full mana and full health when the jump came in, and I believe he also even grabbed a plate mail since that last engage. Mm -hmm. Arteezy just playing the brain game and coming out ahead, forcing another BKB charge from Luo down to eight, and it's been the first charge he died with, and the second charge did nothing, so he's not going to be happy with his usage of that so far. Uh, Kuro, I think it's time to drop down a sentry ward, pick up the gem. We get a blink dagger over on Zai. So the blink into punch is now available from the Tuscar. Not easy. Wherever he wants to farm Puppy, we'll take him. 
And so they may even have a crack at bottom. Luo is just trying to survive up against these Manta Illusions, which have taken away, again, majority of his mana. And the Catapult could just move down and start attacking into the Tier 2 tower. So if they're not careful, this tower could even... No, okay, they get rid of the Catapult. But the tower's within deny range. But Arteezy, he's got another Kree Wave coming on your Tier 3 tower on bottom lane. It just doesn't seem to be anywhere that IG is capable of moving. It's so similar to what happened. I almost want to say in the VG game. <laughs> Fnatic? Yeah, Fnatic game. You, you, you want to fight, but you just can't. Like, there's just no choice. That's going to give them a rush. They're playing it very methodically. They're doing such a good job at map controlling. This is pretty much a, a textbook example of how you want to play the dire lineup against the Radiant lineup. You want to avoid the direct fights. You want to keep farming. Arteezy just ate a moonshot. A little bit of a crystal. Getting some more attack speed as he is getting maxed out. And the reason he goes for that is that he has the Aegis, else he would have got another item first and used that slot. Mm -hmm. But this is just going to up his farm rate even more. Yeah. Up the farm rate, up the chance for also getting that bash during the fights. It's just easy upgrades for the Animage. When you've got the cash, why not? And this is the way we're an Animage. Like, normally we, we kind of say an Animage will drop off around the 45 to 50 mark because he's just maxed out. He, he can't grow any further than that. But that's the point when something like a Moonshard can help you to do so. All right, well, they're getting pulled up to the top lane. Oh, burning. Going right on top of burning. And, well, with the shards burning, there's just Dunn's Abyssal Blade, and he is so dead. Pulse Nova even being stolen by Koro. And can they find the other one? Nope. Chuan able to TP himself away. Another BKB charge doing nothing here for IG. As Burning uses his 10-second one, still dies. When's the, wait, when's the last time they found something on the map? They found one kill when they killed Tusk seven minutes ago, I think. It might be six minutes ago on that graph. Before that, we're looking back another five minutes. Secret's just not letting them find uh, anything. They're going to find more kills. Faith on the other side of the tree line finds Lua to start with. It's Arteezy. There goes your first bash. He hasn't got the Abyssal Blade up and running, but he just jumps down. There's your BKB going again, but the drum charge actually triggered out. Runs himself away as quick as he can. Fearful as ever that RT can just keep going, which he really can. And there goes the Immortal still being there. He's burned only two minutes of the duration of it. But they're ready to go high ground. Like, you got to pull the Soul Curass over on your Viper with the Agonyms. Koro is ready to jump at a moment's notice. He's even got Pulse Nova. Like, the Mana Pool maybe not the greatest to support it with only a thousand, but he can still pump out a crap ton of damage. And Zai's got initiation plus buyback, having 2,200 gold up his sleeve. I actually think Koro's just immediately going to spell steal something else. He won't want to put himself in the position where Pulse Nova will be necessary. It is great damage, but he can do greater things at a distance for sure. So it's not the spell he was hoping for when they went on Ferrari, uh, or sorry, on Burning. He wanted to steal Lightning Storm, I think. Didn't find it. And, well, you know, if you, if you don't try, you don't get an, any spell, and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. He can just try again on someone else. Smart T TP out by burning. Just look at this map. They're so cornered inside their own base. They really can't get out. Secret are pushing all the lanes, farming all the jungle, farm forcing out BKBs for nothing. And now they decide it's go time. Well, how quick can they do it? The sun's already gone over on RTP. And, well, Luo, he's a little bit controlled. Keeps the back turned to S4, looking for the cool spray stacks to go in for S4. Not to mention he's mana leaked. So it's kind of difficult to stand where he is. IG have to fight now. It's going to be daytime in 30 seconds, and then this is going to be twice as hard against that Coddler Luminate. Well, Burning's got a little bit more survivability when he goes in. It's, a bit, it's actually a plate mail. Sitting back, there's a swap on Puppy. Snowball comes in. I couldn't save his Keeper of the Light, but BS, he can. Stealing swap box again, blinding light. The Gemma True side is down on the ground. They want to be picking this one up, but Luo, he's so far back. Arteez, he's just ignored the rest of the world. He's gone for the tier 3 tower on top, and he's following Burning all by himself. He's a three on one. Arteez, he goes man mode with the bash on Ferrari 4 3 0. Can he find more? He just goes back to Rax. Remember, Jake base gaming the rest of his team is on the bottom ferrari's trying to stop our team, but he can't do it the blink away to safety the top melee racks is gone the bottom melee racks will soon join it and rtz comes back for seconds he wants the range racks on top or move towards the mid secrets mopping up the rest of the bottom and it looks hopeless for ig right now they're gonna lose two lanes of racks this is 
I think they lost three. I think this is over. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what they can do anymore. There's 30 seconds on Bristol. I think their chance of taking a team fight is pretty much non-existent without him. I think he just doesn't care. He's waiting 10 seconds until he's got the Abyssal Blade off cooldown. Then he'll probably have a crack at it. But they just keep, keep putting the Solar Crest on him. So he's 100% fine with the jumps in. The Virgin has the melee, and Ferrari swap back out again. Kuros will have the triple stun from Chuan. Doing some work. Requiem for Ferrari. He'll be pulled up into us the air with the Walrus Punch. The only still did go off with the Snowball. Back Secret haven't lost anything. In fact, I think they've won it. Animates have destroyed them all. They haven't lost the hero. IG, they're all dead. And the game is secret. Wait, game number one of this best of three semi final of ESL 1 Frankfurt. It goes to the tournament favourites. Now they are one victory away from facing up against EG and denying IG the potential to have exactly the same final as we had here in 2014. The IG versus EG matchup.